The Legacy of Darcel. At the outset of the War of the Houses, all Enlosian bastards had been recalled and the gates sealed against outsiders. An already cautious policy towards other nations became an absolute isolation. Aeos was closed. These measures prevented the human nations from learning of the civil strife and the general degradation of Iosan cities and, sec and sec security. But a closed Iosan does not improve hope for Skyder's recovery. In most respects, nothing significant had changed in these last 30 years since the War of Houses, which is perhaps the greatest tragedy of Gerashade's legacy. Soulless children continued to be born and quietly killed and sometimes smuggled into retribution hands. The message Gerashade had gone to such great lengths to deliver was forgotten, until contact with a forgotten relation brought a rude awakening. With so much else to occupy our attention, little time or effort had been spent examining the lives of our distant cousins, the Nice. It, had, it has been over twenty-two Helcyons since the former inhabitants of Darcyl heeded the call of the prophet Agric and marched into the northern mountains. From what little I understand of their culture, I can say it bears almost no resemblance to ours. Living hand to mouth as hunters and nomads regressed their ways in some respects, and they lost the literacy of our tongue to adopt a more simpler and cruder language. Even their bodies seem the same, don't no longer seem the same. Generations in the forsaken and frozen peaks had made them alien to us. Were it not for the intelligence gathered by the members of the Retribution and the Seekers working outside of Ios, it would be entirely possible that no one in Ios would have known about the descendants of Darcyl still existed, so small was their impact. Even after becoming aware of the Nice, we disregarded them as a small and insignificant offshoot of our great people who have voluntarily abandoned the safety of our borders and our civilization alike. Recent events have changed everything. And only now... When it may be too late, have we started to grasp the ramifications of our ignorance. In retrospect, we should never have lost touch with these people, or disregard their claims as they were the chosen skyers by the Skyder of Winter. Only a few years ago, the Nice suffered a complete upheaval. With no warning, that communities were beset by hostile invaders, disfigured by the similar blight as witnessed before the fall of Isra. The tribe had fought as well as they could, but were forced to flee to the sharp spires of northern Kaelor. They have only recently begun to speak. To, we have only begun to recently speak with refugees of this attack, working with as 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 we can to overcome language and cultural barriers. The stories are disorientated and fragmentary, yet they seem striking, increasingly likely that the force attacking them must have been sent and led by the Imbravol, by Etherbrawl the dragon that annihilated Isra, and which we shall thought sealed and forgotten, had arisen again. Hidden retribution cells near Korsk were the first to investigate this tragedy, and what they perceived would change forever the future of our people. It was Eris, angel of retribution, who discovered a secret that, nice, that the Nice may have been maintaining for centuries. At some point after the Rivening, Nysur had apparently returned to her chosen people as Skyra had returned to Ios. The Nice fleeing the forces of Etherbal had carried the god Concealer among them, hoping to keep the, his divinity safe for those who followed after. Eris learned of the ailing Nysur had seated himself in an, I in an ice as a means to slow his degradation. The Nice had sought to protect his frozen body further by encasing it in a stone inscribed with holy sigils. They have conveyed this. They have conveyed this vault with them into the heart of Kador, in an attempt to conceal the god from the forces that had largely destroyed their people. Nysur's priests secretly did this vault below Korsk's great holy structure, and there attain, attended him night and day. The Kadorians knew nothing of the significance of this massive block of stone but that their holy men had agreed to offer sanctuary to the nice priests and their ignomatic burden. It is a particular tragedy that re these refugees did not immediately come to Isles for protection, but rather sought shelter among those who were there to portray them. Perhaps to a people long shuddered from the civilization, Korsk seemed well protected and secure from threat. 
Had Ios maintained closer relations with the Nice, perhaps they would have chosen to return home. Alas, that event did not come to pass. Eris at once apprehended the importance of such a finding. This, at last, was evidence of the survival of one of the vanished. If the news were true, that meant Nysor might be returned to Ios and could assist in Skyra's divine burden. Wishing to verify the claim with her own eyes, Eris made her way to the human cathedral. It is impossible to conclude the close timing of this mission involved divine precedence. As Eris arrived at the outer door of the cathedral, she found its guards slaughtered. Within its depths, she in, in, in eventually stumbled upon Nysor's shattered stone vault. There she witnessed the skyder of winter, partially thrawn, th thawed from its frozen rest, being attacked by a nightmare creature. It was none other than the Eldric Gorshade. There was once the Lord Gittershade of House Vire. This unholy creature had stolen Nysor's sword's Voss and profaned it with his touch. His unholy hands proved too feeble to slay the god with a single blow, and the sound of approaching defenders prompted Gorshade to flee the chamber. Eris pursued the Eldric from the cathedrals in hoping of striking him down, but fighting on him alone was no more successful than Don Lord Varus had been three decades prior. Gorshade dealt Eris a crippling injury, but withheld the death blow, allowing her to live to pass on word of his days. By her testimony, it would seem that this creature retains the mad belief that he holds the secret of our salvation, towards which he is willing to commit any blasphemy. His inconsequent, impossible plan will lead to the extinction of our people, as well as his, our remaining gods. Left bleeding in the streets of Korsk, Eris gathered her, warning, her waning strength to return to Nysor to try to rein to alimorate the damage Gurshade's blasphemy had done. There she witnessed another equally terrible profanity. Kedorian soldiers had assembled at the cathedral with members of the Greylord Coven, the wizards of that nation. They had secured the god's vault and were preparing it for transport. Knowing what others must be told of what she had seen, the injured heiress risked her life, hastening back to Ios. The gravity of her news stunned the consulate court and the fane of Skyra both. One of our gods had been found. All evidence suggests Nysur was is captive, held by a most hated enemy. Furthermore, Eris' description of Gorshade's words made it clear that our gods are not safe from humanity, nor the Nightmare Empire, nor the dragon Aetherbron. Swift action is required, lest Nysur's fate be sealed, and he lost to us forever. What tomorrow brings? These events have both electrified and terrified our people, awakening them like purging the purging of an icy like plunging into an icy river. The very last words of the at the least the words of the retribution of Skyra have reached ears formerly closed to them. No one can ignore the very real peril wi human wizardry re represents to our goals. With this news, the retribution has at last been able to step from the shadows. Our agents have been instrumental in returning the Nice to Ios. Reuniting with our lost cousins has been a great boon, as we have a dire need of secrets they hold. Heist Na houses Nair and Shia have once again proven their commitment, stepping forward immediately to support the retribution and place their own reputations at stake. They have brought with them tremendous military assets for which we have a chance to recover Nysor from the hands of our enemies. A long, difficult struggle lies ahead of us, as we are outnumbered many hundreds to one. But this is not the time for hesitation or caution. Skyra lies dying in Sire, Nysor is held captive by human wizards, and the Eldred Gordashate plots to investigate the swift annihilation of our few remaining gods. Whatever hope we may have of discovering the survival of Nysor, we must seize it now. The next few years will be vital in determining whether we can endure to bring another generation into this world, for the sake of our children, indeed, of our very souls. We must march to war. It is not hatred that motivates us, but hope. Let the knowledge of our, that the cost of failure lead a wild and savage strength to our cause, 
so that we may again, once again rise as proud and valiant people worthy of our legacy.